let's discuss about java streams and how the high level flow looks like and then we will see some code examples so here if you see uh, in java streams we have input basically it's a pipeline to process your data so it have two type of functions one is intermediate functions or you can call it as operations also and another is your terminal functions and intermediate functions basically are used for your filtering or sorting or transformation so basically more than one intermediate functions can be used so if you see here this is how our pipeline looks basically so we pass our input to our intermediate functions which will do filtering and transformation of our data based on our requirement so this will do this and also intermediate functions minimum can be zero and maximum can be n in in your pipeline so basically you can use any number of intermediate functions until you are uh, satisfied with your result basically and also some of the examples of intermediate functions are like you have a uh, filter map flat map sort extra right so these are some of the examples which are commonly used to do transformation of your data and and in the end of your pipeline once your pipeline is basically ending you need to use terminal function so basically terminal function have to be always one exactly one so it can't be zero it can't be more than one so there should be one terminal function in your pipeline so this is how it looks and terminal functions examples can be uh, for each collect find any find first and many more right so these are just commonly used and and also one thing is important here so intermediate functions are basically lazy functions so they will not do their processing until the terminal function is called and another is we can do chaining of intermediate functions but we can't do any chaining on terminal function and intermediate function will always return stream so they will do the processing they will do your transformation and all the operation and they will return the stream to the terminal function and terminal function will terminal function will return some value or any other format in which you, you want data right so basically if you're if you're using min max right so they will just return you one value uh, but if you are using collect or anything, it can return you some other format, any other format, any other non-stream format, we can say. Okay. So it will return you this. So this will be your basically output. So this is how it looks. So input, then you will do your filtering and transformation of the data. And some examples are filter map, flat map, which we will see in the code. And then we have one terminal function, exactly one and then terminal function will return your output in non-stream form. Let's see some code snippets. So we will discuss these six files and I will also put all these files in my GitHub repo. You can copy the link from the description box. So the first question, which is simply a very basic question, like how you convert any array to the stream. That is our first step, right? So if you see here, our array can be of primitive type or object type. So if our array is of primitive type, so we can simply use arrays.stream method. And if you see, we already have primitive type stream objects here in the class. So here int stream is already there inside the stream class basically, right? So if it's primitive type, you can use that object and then you can simply use arrays.stream method. But if your object or array is of object type, then you have to use stream.off method basically. So here, if you see, we have integer type, which is not primitive, which is object type. And then what we are creating the stream of that object. And then we are using the stream dot off method. So this is the basic how to start with the streams. And then here, if you see, we are not using any intermediate function, because if you remember, we discussed intermediate function can be 
zero also. So in this case, we are directly using our terminal function for each just to print the elements in our stream. So if I run this program, so you will see here all the elements in our stream are getting printed. So this is our first example. <clears throat> now let's see the second example, like why we are, you know, why we are going for a streams and how the code looks between traditional way versus stream. So here, if you see, we have a list of integer, we have some numbers here and our use case is we have to find sum of squares for even numbers, right? So this is our traditional code. So what we will do, we will do for each loop, right? And then we will on each element, we will write if condition to find if it's even or odd, and then we will do our computation and then we will keep adding in, into our sum. So this is our traditional code example in which we are using for each loop, if statements, uh, concatenation and all, right? So now same use case, how we can do using stream basically, right? So if you see here, we want the sum of squares of even number, right? So our output will be the sum. So here I'm saying my output is of int, right? Because it's a sum. And then we are saying numbers and then we are using dot stream method, right? So after this, we will be filtering the elements, whether they are even or odd. So here we are using this filter intermediate function. And then here we are using the Lambda expression for our condition, basically. And then once the filtering is done, then we are using dot map to int function. This is also intermediate function. If you see, we are not using simple map here, right? So we are not using simple map because if you see our output is in int. So we have to use map to int to match with our output. So if our output would be in double, then we would have used map to double. So here we are using map to int and here we are again using lambda expression to do the com our computation. Basically in this case, we are just squaring the number. So we are using two intermediate function in this uh, pipeline. And once our transformation and logical thing is done, then we are using the terminal function, which is sum so that it will give us the total sum of squares for even number. So this, you see, this traditional code is being converted to Java stream by using intermediate functions, by using Lambda expressions and by using terminal function. So if I run this code, if you see, so it will just give us the sum of squares, a traditional and sum of squares, a Java string. So here we learned we can use more than one intermediate function and we can and map function. Basically, if our output is int, then we have to use map to int. If our output is double, then we have to use map to double or uh, whatever your output is. We have to use the corresponding map function. So if you see here, our code readability is improved a lot. We are use, doing the stuff in a functional programming using Lambda expression. So the next example is map versus flat map. So a lot of interviewer will ask you this question. So basically map is used to do any transformation, but flat map is used wherever you want to do flattening also and transformation also. So if you see, if we have a simple list of string, hello word, right? So I want to convert each word to uppercase. So here what I will do words dot stream and then I will use the map uh, intermediate function and then I will just convert it to two uppercase. And then I am using dot collect, which is a terminal function and I am just putting it into the list. So if you see here, we are able to convert each word into uppercase in this array, but if your but if your listed nested list like this so in this case we can't use map because we have nested list so we first we have to do flattening of this list right so for this flat map functions comes into play so if you see here first i am doing flat map list stream and then i am doing collect collector dot to list so here if i have to uh, convert this also to uppercase 
so what i will do once the flat map is done right so that means the flattening is done map function let's say if i will do map and then i want to do some transformation so i will i can just use let's say uh i i will just multiply by two each number because flattening is already done and then i am performing my logical or transformation thing here and then i am using a collect method so if i will run this code now so if you see here using map we are getting hello world with upper caps right so we are uh, getting it here upper case and then flattening of list if you see our input was in nested list but our output is one list here right because we did flattening and then what we did we did multiply by two on each element so it will become two four six eight so this is the major difference between map uh, versus flat map now now we will see one example here uh, just to understand the use cases so i have transaction class here so i have category and amount so here i have put some dummy data transaction uh, array dot as list so we have some dummy data so our use case is we have to calculate the total amount spent on groceries so again our total amount will be in int so what we are doing we are using the filter method here right which is intermediate method and i am giving my lambda condition basically dot equals grocery here so our first step is done and now for each of the item we want the amount right so i will use map to int because our output is in int and then i will use the get amount method of the transaction class and then i will use the terminal function sum to get the total sum so basically this is our a uh, code which will give us the total amount spent on groceries so our second use case here is find the average expense across all categories so to do that our average can be in decimal also so here we are taking the double and if you see here now so we are not using map to int we are using map to double and then we are using dot average dot or else because if you see here if i am only using average it is giving me error because the output of average is optional double so we have to handle that optional thing by giving the or else basically that's why we are giving dot or else so if you if we run this code here so it will give us the total spent on grocery and average expense here right so this is our example 1 and let's take a look on the example two. so this will give you more idea on more uh, intermediate functions so here we have one array list here and what we are doing first we are using the filter intermediate function and under filter we are giving our lambda expression to filter the even numbers and then we are using dot map to square each number and then i am using the distinct method because our uh, list can have uh, the same numbers also so i am using the dot distinct intermediate function and then i am using dot peak so basically dot peak is used for your debugging when you want to see like which element is being worked on so i am using dot peak here and then in the last i am using dot collect which is the terminal function to give me the list of integer so basically in this example we are using this four intermediate functions and one terminal function here so if i run this code here so i will comment other th other code so if i run this here so if you see here so first we did filter then we did map then we did dot distinct right so after that in the peak method we are doing the system dot out print ln right so what it will print us the five numbers so first the four is getting worked right and then 16 is getting worked because 4 is basically the 2 right 2 is the even number and then we did 2 into 2 which became 4 and then we did peak so this is how it is uh, printing out using peak method and then this is our final output okay and if you see we did have eight uh, two times so dot distinct help us to remove that uh, duplicate from our list so this is our output so let's see the count terminal operation basically so the count is so now what we want to do we are filtering the number greater than 5 and then we are counting the remaining number so if you see the number greater than 5 is 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स राइट सो आइडली इट शुड प्रिंट अ सिक्स सो इफ आई गो हेयर सो लेट मी कमेंट द अदर लाइन सो इफ यू सी हेयर द काउंट ऑफ नंबर्स इज ग्रेटर देन फाइव इज सिक्स हेयर राइट सो बिकॉज वी हैव नॉट यूज द डिस्टिंक्ट सो इफ आई विल यूज अ डिस्टिंक्ट हेयर राइट सो वॉट इट विल डू इट विल just remove the duplicate from the count also so if i run this now so it should give us the five output okay so this is how it is uh, done and the last one is we will use the sum again we are using the map dot int uh, intermediate function and then we are just using the sum so this will give us sum of all the numbers basically Here, so sum of all the numbers will be seventy one. So basically, one plus two plus three th plus three plus four, right? So it will give us the sum of all the numbers. So this was our stream example two. So by now you should be able to know all the concepts of stream. So now the last concept I want to discuss is parallel streams. Basically, so by default, if you see the parallel stream are not basically uh, faster. because when you think anyone will tell you like parallel right so you will think this will be faster right but it's not the case because when you use parallel stream it comes with lot of memory overhead because they have to manage the threads you know they have to synchronize the threads and then give you the final output so that's what we will discuss in this case so we have int array of 1 million size and i am filling the array value with 2 so here i am just logging the time to compare the performance so i will remove this code first so we will just run the sequential part first so i am just doing the squares and then i am just doing the sum right so it's a 1 million size so it will uh, for each element it will do square of the uh, number and then it will give us the total sum so if i will run this one so if i run this one so it gives me 9 millisecond so if you think like 1 million records we did some computation and then we did one sum computation in the end and it takes us 9 millisecond using the uh, sequential stream or simple stream right so now what i did i just copied the same code here and only change will be after stream we have to give dot parallel method run in parallel right uh, and then all the code is same here so dot parallel will basically run multiple threads and then it will do the computation and now let's i will run this program so if you see here our sequential took 9 millisecond but our parallel took 9 17 millisecond right because uh, it's almost double right it's, it's almost double because when you use parallel it did lot of overhead and then it have to manage so that's why you have to be really careful when you are using the parallel method uh, because maybe it will not suit your use case 